Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're going to be continuing our education on carving and technically glazing as well. You see today is going to be kind of a mix of carving slash glazing techniques because today I'm going to be showing you guys about the inlay technique. The inlay technique is actually pretty simple to understand but there's a myriad of ways to do it. Now this is technically a representation of an inlay technique. It's called an inlay technique for a very simple reason. It's because you're laying glaze inside of a texture. It's, it's called the inlay technique, that, that's why. Laying glaze inside of a carved texture or inside of a texture is the crux of the inlay technique. It's extremely simple to do, but a lot of people seem to think that you need to get a brush, dip your brush inside your glaze, and painstakingly go over every single little texture that you made. And I'm here to tell you that there's a much easier way to do it. Now before we get this video started, I would heavily suggest that you watch the two carving videos that I've already let out. I show you guys how to carve this exact pattern and in fact I use this same exact cup inside of that video. I also show you guys how to do stuff like this. But if you don't know how to carve stuff in the first place like this, or even something as simple as this, well this technique's gonna be a little bit lost on you. But it turns out there's some dude on YouTube who like made all these videos and showing you guys how to do this. It take you know it's like 10 minutes. It takes like 10 minutes to learn how to do it. I'm sure he like made videos that he he linked down below in the description somewhere. I don't know. I don't know the guy personally, I'm just saying I think they're down there somewhere. Now this technique doesn't really require a lot of explanation. All you really need is a piece of bisque, or if you're using underglaze, you might even have to get greenware work, of an already carved surface. Now this technique isn't really that difficult to understand. All you really need is a carved piece, presumably the, you, you are the one who carved it, like hopefully you didn't steal a piece. A little bit of glaze. Yeah, boy. And a little brush. The size of the brush really does depend on how deep and how big your carvings are. For example, this big old chunk of carve here, I can very easily dip my paintbrush in here and just carve right here and wipe away the rest of it. This is pretty easy, but for something like this where I would have to kind of fine line this with my glaze brush, well, I would want something smaller much like this. Now here's what most people do. Most people get a little bit of glaze, they get their paintbrush, they dip their paintbrush in the glaze, and they will sit here for hours on end, painstakingly going over some of the lines. Just like, oh, just, oh, yep, so, so simple, so easy, yep, right, right there, that's the good stuff. At this point, you're technically still laying glaze inside of the carved texture that you put in there. This is still an inlay technique, but the way that I like to do this is a little bit different and faster and better, if I'm being honest with you. Even though that only took me about five seconds to do, I technically have to put on three more coats of this inside of this little texture here, and I have to do it all the way around the cup. So you can imagine this very exact precise technique would take quite some time. It's not like I'm gonna make an entire production line of this stuff. Or you can do it the Dirty Potter way. Yeah, we don't we don't need that anymore. The better way, I mean the the other way you can do this, if you are really about that inlay technique life, is you can get your carved piece, get yourself a couple of these little bottles. They're usually sold at ceramic art stores, or you can buy them on Amazon. They're very easy to find, and fill your underglaze inside of one of these bottles. When you do so, this creates a little applier or applicator in which you can kind of treat like a brush, but it makes it way easier to put glaze, underglaze, high fire, anything you want to put in the inlay of these. It works really well for lines just like this. The applicator also works as kind of a semi brush, so you can very easily put a glob of glaze here and just kind of whisk it around, and it usually ends up filling the rest of those spots. Unfortunately, when you're done, you do still have to technically wipe away a lot of the leftover glaze, but it works out pretty well. You just have to get a sponge, apply really good pressure, and go very slowly over whatever you just applied. And look, comes out pretty good, and that was only with like one or two swipes. Oh man, I wish I could really show you more of this technique, but I don't have any more carved surfaces to- <gasps> OTHER SIDE! Yeah, get your baited! Potter tip! 
If you are using one of these applicators at home and you're doing the technique that I'm doing instead of painstakingly using a brush to fill in a lot of your glaze textures, what I would do, right, because I've done this before, you know, it's sort of my job, I would get a damp sponge and usually we just kind of wipe off the glaze and it's fairly easy, but stuff like this that's a little bit smaller, I usually put a gratuitous amount of underglaze. As you can see, it's kind of dripping everywhere, but this is okay. This is because I want it to fill a lot of the inlay texture. What I would usually do to get rid of this is put a sponge on here, a damp sponge, leave it there for a second, and slowly wipe away without putting too much pressure. If you do it correctly, it See, that was only two swipes, and I got rid of a high majority, already, of a lot of the leftover glaze. The key is to not keep swiping super fast. Don't be that person who's like, I gotta get this glaze off. Oh, I've made more glaze. Dang it. You do have to remember that a partial ingredient of glaze and underglaze is technically water. This means that the longer the sponge is on one area, the easier it is to soak it up along with some of the glaze. So instead of swiping your life away like an angry cat, just go ahead and slowly very slowly with constant pressure wipe away and a good portion of the time it'll come out pretty clean you see now we have something to give our mothers and fathers so they can put it on the put it on the fridge i guess i don't know i don't know how it puts it on the fridge this is super worn out as you can probably tell but it is also a glaze applicator in which has pinpoint accuracy specifically so that you don't need a myriad of brushes in order to apply a lot of your glazes you just have to apply more glaze in the inlay of your carvings your carvings can be this big and you can still put under glaze in them just like this fairly easily your carvings can also be this big and you can still just fill in whatever space you want with that glaze. You really just have to keep on squeezing and apply more glazes. Using this a thousand times over will always beat having like 20 brushes for 15 different types of shapes that you have. And they're extremely cheap. I'm pretty sure your local ceramic store, even bigceramicstore.com sells these. By the way, we're an affiliate with Big Ceramic Store. They don't give me any money, but they just save you a little bit of money. There you go, it's called right there at the bottom. Three, <laughs> it only costs $3? Wow, that's... I mean, I didn't see this, I mean, I bought this, I didn't pay attention to the price, but like, it's actually, it's actually a pretty good price for this. This is less money than like, some of the crappy brushes that I have. Potter tip! If you do decide to buy a bunch of these, much like I have, I heavily suggest that you, number one, keep the cap that comes with this applicator. This makes sure that the glaze does not dry inside the pipe of the applicator, which- Ooh. Ow! I poked myself! If glaze dries in here, you either are going to have to replace this or somehow get the glaze out and not many of these things come with like a little tiny plunger because to get something inside of here means you would need something thinner than here and this is pretty much the size of a pin anyway so you know let this dry out at your own peril but I would just keep the cap on if I were you but I imagine the same people who have trouble keeping this cap on are the same people that don't put the cap back on the toothpaste Cheryl. Also, if you have a bunch of these, I heavily suggest you keep one per glaze color. So if this one's black, this one would be green, this one would be blue. And I would heavily suggest you never change the color or brand. So for example, I have some Mako Fundamentals inside of this one right here. This bottle is always, always, always going to be Mako Fundamentals. Because if I put maybe an Amico underglaze or a different type of Mako underglaze in here that's at a lower temperature or a lower cone, I'm not going to know because they both look black and this is going to mess up my results forever and ever. So I heavily suggest if you have one of these, keep it in front of its correlating bottle so that you always remember or just label it. I know this seems kind of like a really strenuous potter tip, but trust me, I've done this before. You don't want to mix these up. Okay, that was actually pretty easy. Now we're just gonna wait for these to dry. I'll stick them in the kiln and then I'll show you guys what actually happens whenever you do an inlay technique. It's pretty easy. It looks very, very similar to this. 
I really just kind of wanted to show you that there's a much easier way to do it with these little tiny bottles that cost like less than four dollars but hold on to your pottery pans because I'm gonna put these in the kiln in maybe a couple days and I'm gonna show you how good these are gonna look in just a little bit by just putting some underglaze on the inside of your carved texture um, here's a cute picture of a cat because last time in the last video I told you I'd give you one and I didn't give you one because I don't know if I like cats as much as dogs fight me in the comments below And this is essentially the final result. It's honestly just a way to accentuate your carving. You can only imagine if you carved your life away and then you put one solid color on here. If that color isn't a multifaceted color or it just kind of goes one bland color, it doesn't have more than one dimension of color to it, you're pretty much never gonna get something like this. This is a way to really force that color to stay inside of the carving texture that you put so much work into. I mean, I just showed you how to do it with black and a little bit of pink right here, but you can do it with black, you can do it with blue, you can do it with green, you can even do it with cone 5-6 glazes. You don't have to use underglaze, although I prefer to do it for this technique. And if you want to, you don't even have to put a glaze over this. This is a surefire way to make sure that this is a really pronounced color if you do decide to put a glaze over it, but you can very easily do what I did when I showed you this earlier and just kind of leave the glaze alone inside of the inlay of this texture and just glaze the inside of it and make a little bit of raw work. It still looks really nice like this. A good example of why I put the underglaze in here and then I glazed the entire thing to make this color more pronounced is that I did this before this episode and I ended up getting, well, I mean, technically it still looks nice, but you can clearly see this is a much more pronounced color than something like this. If I saw these two on a table, you can definitely guess which one I'm taking home. This is a singular color with this texture on it. I didn't put anything in the inlay of here, I just kind of let it be, and you can definitely still see the patterns, but this is much more pronounced and looks like you put actual work into the carvings of your textures. Thank you, Dirty Potters, for hey, where are you going? You signed a blood contract with me, you ain't going nowhere. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my actual artwork instead of just these testers, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see the instagram the facebook's the um you know we don't do twitter for for obvious reasons we don't do twitter trying more and more to give you guys videos on how to kind of modify and alter certain things that i've already shown you so we've already gone over on the video how to make a straight cylinder cup in this fashion and we've already gone over how to carve this type of pattern i made an entire episode on it but now i'm teaching you what you can do with these things we're kind of building as we go thank you guys for joining me today i hope this technique helps a lot of your artwork look a little bit more interesting there's plenty of people that i've already taught this technique to and now they're wondering what else they can do with this technique i just wanted to teach you guys a little bit more of what you can do with what i've already taught you on the channel it also kind of helps with a little bit of realism work because this is clearly a tree but trees clearly aren't black right you can very easily make it look like a real life tree by painting it whatever color you want so if you're someone who likes to paint bark or you want to put underglazes and make textures look realistic or lifelike you can very easily do that as well and this technique will definitely help you with that. I hope you guys have a fantastic next kiln load and I will see you dirty potters next week. I feel like I'm doing an infomercial. No more will you have to have 15 brushes. You just need this one handy dandy glaze applicator.